Hey guys, so today I'm going to be wrapping up all the books I read in June. June was a really weird reading month for me, that's the only way I could think of how to describe it. I wasn't in a slump, but I definitely felt fatigued, I guess you could say, from all the scheduled reading I'd done in May. I think I just like overdid myself with readathons, with planning secret videos, and in June I just let myself move read so that I didn't fall into a slump. And I still managed to read 15 books, which I'm really happy about, um, but not a whole lot of new ones that I loved so that's unfortunate. Like I said I decided to let myself move read in June and I just had this really strong urge to pick up City of Brass which I did originally read when it first came out. I actually didn't love this when it first came out. I think I gave it about three 3.5 stars. I can't remember why. I think I felt a bit underwhelmed because I was watching booktube at the time. I wasn't on booktube myself but this book was incredibly overhyped. I mean oh I don't think that anymore. I think it deserves all the hype. I felt very underwhelmed and I felt like the hype put too many expectations but when I reread this I was immediately drawn into the story. We start off in ancient century. Ancient century. We start off in ancient Cairo and we are following a girl called Nari who is an orphan who's grown up on the streets and to get by she does these cons. So she does these exorcism cons and at the very beginning of this book she's doing one of these exorcism cons but this time she accidentally does bring a ancient Jin back from the dead. From there the Jin sort of drags her along to his city Devabrad which is also the city of brass. That's kind of where the story takes off. It's full of court politics, it's full of all these different houses and each house of the Jin have like a different ability. I love house politics, that's something I just adore. Nari, our main character in this, she's actually a healer. From the beginning we know that she has these unique healing abilities and she learns more about those abilities and where they came from and where she comes from. When I reread this I also thought that the reason why I might have not enjoyed it the first time around and I think some people might have a little bit of an issue with it is there is a bit of a pacing issue. The first half of this book is Nari and Dara who is the gene she brings back from well the not from the dead but the gene she accidentally um awakens I guess <laughs> it's the best way I could describe it. First half of this book is them traveling to David Rod and I think that can kind of be a bit I always say boring but I think if you aren't into their dynamic then you would find it slow and then once you get to David Rod that's when all the court politics ensues and the ending of this is insane. So I read this immediately listened to the audiobook A Kingdom of Copper which I think is my favorite book in the trilogy. Kingdom of Copper is pretty much all court politics and it is crazy like what goes down <laughs> like seriously oh and the ending <sighs> and then i had to listen to empire of gold which came out in june thankfully i don't know how i would have waited for that book if i had to wait like if you did that props to you i i don't think i could have survived i'm being very dramatic but this series just made me feel all the feelings it's a new all-time favorite trilogy this is an adult fantasy by the way i have seen some people classify it as way but it's not it's definitely one of those books that's like a bridge between ya and adult fantasy i highly recommend it i think it's fantastic i just so many characters i love i adore nari she's one of my all-time favorite characters she starts off in the series being all alone and by the end she has all these people around her that she calls family. I also just love her journey as a healer. It's really cool because when she gets to Deobard she does work as a healer but she doesn't just heal normal wounds, she also heals curses and that was just a really fun twist on things. I just seriously there's so many things I love about the series, I highly recommend it. I also think the audiobooks are fantastic so give them a go. I'm pretty sure they're on screen. I gave each of the books in the Deobard trilogy five stars. The next book I want to talk about is The Never Tilting World by Rin Shibeko. Rin Shibeko, if you do not know, is one of my all-time favorite authors. I think she is fantastic. I just am obsessed with her world building. I have quickly come to learn, not quickly, slowly come to learn, but recently learned that I think world building is my favorite thing in stories. Like I think that's my top thing. If world building is done well, I'm very likely to really love a book and I think that's a huge reason why Rinsha Pekko has my heart when it comes to her stories because Oh, itch. Because all her stories are so unique in the world building and so complex and layered and I just think it's so sophisticated for a YA fantasy. In this world, the world itself has stopped turning so that's why this book is called The Never Tilting World because it stopped. It ain't moving. And because the world doesn't move, the climate of the world has been affected. So not only is one half of the world always in darkness and then one half always in sunlight, the part that's always in sunlight is like a desert and then this part that's in the night is more like a wintry setting 
And then what's also been impacted is the people and these the people who live in these environments have been given abilities and their abilities are based on the environments they're in. So there's desert people and they've got like fire elemental magic and such. It is so cool, so clever. This story follows four main characters but there's really two storylines. To break it down simply there is a prophecy that drives these four characters to come to the center of the earth where they will meet and it's all to do with the mystery of this prophecy and two of the main characters are involved in the mystery and the other two are companions that are following the main characters along. I just had so much fun with this. I actually did a buddy read of this with my friend Allison and she also adored it. She also adored it and we were gushing and freaking out about this so much and it was just so pleasant to read with her because we pretty much felt the same about everything that happened to me which is really nice when you want to read with someone and you're so in sync with your feelings on a book so I just had such a pleasant experience because a this was a fantastic read and b because Alison was a fantastic buddy reader and I gave this book 4.75 stars 5 stars was rounded up on Goodreads I don't know why it's not quite a 5 and then listen to the audiobook of What Lies Between Us by John Mars I read my first John Mars book back in May and I loved it. I read the one by him. I thought he was such a engaging writer and I thought his concept was really cool. So this was his latest release which is why I picked it up on audio. And this book follows two women and it's about a, a woman in her 30s called Nina who keeps her mother Maggie locked up in the attic. This story switches between timelines so we have present day and we also look at the past and it's all about this mother-daughter relationship and how Maggie ended up in the attic and why and and all the crazy shenanigans that went on between them over the years. I... <laughs> There's no kind way to put this. This feels like such a weird thing to say because I have no authority, but I just don't think this book should have been written, which I feel like is such a super unpopular opinion because I went on Goodreads and a lot of people seem to really have enjoyed this book. For me, the issue was I didn't like how the women were written. I didn't like how women's issues were written. In particular, there was infertility written in this. And I just thought that for such a sensitive topic that should be really handled with a lot of care wasn't. Nina is infertile and she describes her body as a broken machine. And there were just other descriptions that happened every now and then that really disturbed me as a woman like to call a woman who's infertile a broken like it was like a broken machine or broken parts of a machine it was something along those lines and then also the basic fact that this entire story is about a relationship between a mother and daughter and I just think that John Ma should have written about a father and son like he just should have done it the other way around like why do a mother and daughter relationship in a thriller mystery like I, I also think there were times where the story played into really dangerous and hurtful um also not to mention harmful stereotypes that are often seen in thrillers about women and I just did not like it. I just did not like it. I was so disappointed in this. I was really disappointed because I thought John Mars was going to be a new favourite thriller author and that just was not the case as proven by this book. I mean I'm still going to give his other books a go but I just don't think he should have written this book. I just think, I mean, I mean he could have still written it but I think he should have written it from a father-son perspective, not from a women's perspective. The other thing I would say is it talks about Nina's relationships with men and she starts um, having sexual relationships with men at 14 and like I mean that was another thing I just was not okay with. Unfortunately I ended up giving this one two stars. It might even be lower than that, to be honest. I think I gave it two stars because I do find his stories, not his stories, I do find his writing to be really engaging, easy to read. I do like his writing, but just the content in this book was just... I then reread a really old favourite of mine and that is Looking for Ella Brandy by Melina Machetta. This book I've reread more than any other book. I first read it at 14 and I reread it pretty much once a year. I love it because of how much I see myself in this story and in this character. This is pretty much considered an Australian classic so if you're in Australia you might have heard of this but I don't know if you would have if you live outside of Australia. We are following Josie Ella Brandy who is second generation Italian Australian and we follow her for one year. It's her final year of high school but it's really about culture and about family. It's about what it's like to grow up in Australia and be Italian. It's about her relationship with her father because she was raised by a single mother and for the first time she meets her father and they start to form a relationship. I just adore it. Like it's hard for me to talk about this book and how to describe it because first of all it means so much to me but also because like the way I just described it before was in a way that made it sound like any other YA that's out there but it's just so much more than that especially to myself. My dad's Italian, my mom's Australian so I just love the culture aspect that's like a huge thing for me and like the family dynamics in this also means a lot to me I can also relate to it in some way and something I've found that reading this throughout the years is each time I read it I relate to a different character I think that her love interest and their relationship is flawed but I think it's such a realistic depiction of a first boyfriend girlfriend relationship and I remember reading this back when I was younger and reading so many YA stories where I really felt like the romantic relationship was romanticized and I feel like that happens a lot in YA it's 
especially the YA that came out when I was a teenager, a lot of it was so fluffy, it's like just not realistic in so many ways and I just think this is such a realistic depiction. I love how this book also talks about consent because I talked about this book a lot on my channel last year, I haven't really talked about it much this year and I got a message a couple months ago on Instagram from a subscriber saying that they watched my video and read this book because of me and that it's their new all-time favourite book and that just meant so much to me that subscriber also said that they're an Australian girl with Italian heritage so just to know that someone out there read this because of me this book means so much to me and if you, to be able to give that to someone else is just like I have no words it's just I have no words amazing like I just it makes me so happy. I love this book. I love Melina Machetta. She writes kind of like in a stream of consciousness writing style. I really like it. A lot of her books tend to feature Italian Australian families and they also tend to have some sort of mental health related topics included as well. And this book in particular, I think it was her second published book, but it was published in the early 90s. So it's kind of crazy how relevant I find this book to still be, despite it being so old. And yeah, obviously five stars. <laughs> the next book I read, I did not end up giving a rating to. That is The Ruin of Kings. I didn't get this rating because I was so confused for most of this. This was a birthday gift from my lovely friend Katie, so I will have her channel linked. Please check her out. I'm definitely gonna give this book another go because I was confused. Like, I was so confused. This book was told in one of the most non-linear narratives I have ever come across. There are two POVs that we follow, and then there are also footnotes. I don't know if you can see that. So if you're someone who is not a fan of the Midnight Chronicles and the footnotes in them, <laughs> I recommend steering clear of this. This story starts off and we're following a boy called Kieran who's in jail and he starts off telling his story to his jailer about where he comes from and how he came to be where he's currently at. Then it kind of switches to another POV also telling Kieran's story but from the middle and then there's like another POV from the footnotes and it was just... I, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what went down. Like, I was so confused. The other thing that makes this book so confusing is there's body swapping that happens in this story as well, like, which was cool, which was a really cool concept to see. I do want to give this book another chance because there was so much cool world building and magic and really interesting side characters that I think I would love if I could make sense of the story. But just like the body swapping happening, the multiple timelines, a lot of the names as well are very, very similar, like just ridiculously similar. And I couldn't even like enjoy this book, to be honest. I was just too busy trying to work things out and I just didn't take anything in. So I will say I didn't entirely love the main character. Now my opinion on him could have of course been impacted by me trying to figure out what the heck was going on in this book but I also thought he was one of those fantasy main characters where basically everything was handed to him and he didn't really have to work towards anything and I definitely prefer characters who have to work whether that or their magical abilities, learning how to use them or if that's to get into a particular leadership role or whatever. I definitely prefer those kind of characters rather than ones that have things served up to them on a plate but there were some really interesting side characters and I did like his dynamics with quite a few of the characters particularly his brother I really liked their dynamic a couple of uncomfortable things though that I need to go back and like revisit because like I said I, I, I don't know how mixed up I am with the context Kieran is 15 in this and he does sleep with a woman who's twice his age which if you have read this one, please let me know what you thought. Please let me know if you found it confusing as well. Like, I felt so stupid and I get really frustrated whenever a book makes me feel stupid. Thankfully, it doesn't happen very often. I then listened to the audiobook of Born a Crime. This book is a memoir of Trevor's life growing up in South Africa as a mixed race child. His father is white and his mother is black. And it talks about segregation and just the history of South Africa during the period that he grew up in. I found this really interesting and educational. There's a lot about South Africa I did not know and I brought aware of how ignorant I am what happened in South Africa during that period that I really need to like go and educate myself further on because there's definitely so much more to learn. But no, I did enjoy this. Trevor narrates the audiobook himself and so I highly recommend picking the audiobook up if you are interested in this story because I think he has such a storyteller's voice and presence. Like he just immediately drawed me into the story and it was so easy to listen to. I love the way he told particular things, like particularly the way he talked about his mum and his mum just sounded like a really awesome person. I think there were definitely like parts of it where I was more interested in the story than other parts but overall I yeah definitely recommend this. I then picked up More Than We Can Tell by Bridget Camera. Bridget Camera, I have loved her books. This one I didn't. <laughs> I think it was at the very end of last year I read Bridget Camera's two other contemporary books called Call It What You Want and Letters to the Lost and this is a follow-up to Letters to the Lost but we are following the best friend to the main character in Letters to the Lost so new main characters in this sort of. One main character in this is the side character in the first book. I just made that way more complicated. This didn't work for me. I loved the other contemporaries. This book, I just... 
And first of all, it's really excited for this because Rev in this, who was also in Letters to the Lost, I really enjoyed him in Letters to the Lost and I was really looking forward to getting to know his character more personally in this book and to get to know his story. He is a foster kid, so there is a lot of um, discussion about his upbringing and his relationship with his current foster parents and also his relationship with his biological father who was also abusive. I just didn't, it's not that I didn't connect to Rev, I just wasn't as engaged in his story. What I found with Bridget Cameron's other stories was like none of the characters have really gone through things that I'd gone through. but. I was always felt very engaged and very inclined to read their story. But my biggest problem with this was the female character's POV in this, Emma. She is a girl who kind of has a bit of a difficult relationship with her parents. Like, not awful, just like communication issues, I guess. And she also has hopes and dreams of becoming a game programmer. And that's something that her mom does not want her to, to pursue. So there's kind of that little bit of conflict. But she's just so judgmental. When her and Rev first meet, Emma's out walking her dog and she looks at her phone and she's on her phone for a little while and the dog kind of wanders off. And then she notices that the dog's gone and she goes chasing after it. And Rev has the dog and Rev is feeding it food and the first thing she says instead of thank you for getting my dog because I was distracted on my phone is I be feeding my dog poison because she thinks like she I'm pretty sure she calls him a loser she thinks that's what he's gonna do like she's just so judgmental and then there's stuff that she did I was just like she's just stupid like she's just stupid I just don't understand how this character can do this and it was like her stupidity that was driving the plot so that sounds so harsh but that's like the only way I could describe it and yeah I just wasn't a fan whatever um, Bridget Cameron did in Call It What You Want and Letters to the Lost she just didn't do in here and I can't exactly put my finger on what it was I think one thing I will say though is I did notice that with the other books there were the main characters and their family was a huge part of the story but I also thought that the friendships were also quite a big part of not a big part but a bigger part in the other books than they were in this book and I think it's these two characters I didn't like ultimately but it could be something else because I, I don't know it was just so disappointing especially since I really loved the other two books that she wrote I especially really loved what you want it, I highly recommend. I will still give a go to whatever she writes next, but I'm apprehensive. I will also say she tends to have a bit of a formula and the books are set out in a very similar formatting. Like I said, she has this contemporary and the two others. She also wrote A Curse of Dark and Lonely and the sequel, of course. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Something Broken. A heart so fierce and broken that's it every single book of hers always is told in a dual pov and one of the povs is a male and the other is a female and they always end up being each other's love interests so i might be a bit bored of her repetitive storytelling that is definitely a factor i need to like consider if i am sickle i ended up giving this book two stars as well i had so many two stars in june i also listened to the audiobook of long way down now this book is a book written in verse and it's so short the author narrates this and he does such a fantastic job it's a very emotional story we are following a boy who gets into this elevator and on each level of the elevator he meets someone who he's lost in his life due to gun violence. It's all about gun violence and coming to terms with gun violence and the cycle of it. It was very emotional. It was very powerfully and impactfully written. It's so short as well. I think it was two hours or it might have been three hours. It was one of the shortest audiobooks I've ever listened to so I highly recommend it. Like it was a short story but it just really packed a huge punch and included so many important topics and was beautifully told. I quickly just wanted to mention I also finished Timekeeper in June which is by Tara Sim. This book I read for my video where I read time travel books. It's part of my reading favorite tropes series. This book didn't have time travel in it but the magic and the world building is to do with time which was a really cool element. I won't say a whole lot, I'll let you watch the video um, if you haven't already, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, but I loved the start of this. I was so invested um, but unfortunately where the plot went I wasn't as interested in the story as I was at the beginning but I'm definitely interested to see where the second third book goes in the series and yeah so please watch that vlog if you are interested in hearing all the thoughts. And the last book I completed in June which I started in May for Asian Readathon was Jade City by Fonda I listened to the audiobook. Don't want to see too much about this because it will be in a video coming up so all my thoughts will be on it then but it is an urban fantasy book. I got like 19 somewhere between like 1960s and 1980s vibes urban setting and the way the magic works in this world is through jade and so these um characters wear jade to enhance strength and to enhance like all sorts of abilities. To be able to have those abilities you have to have jade and to be able to wear it and like the more jade you wear the more powerful you are so the way the world works the world is kind of 
of divided into mafia or gang families. We are following one family who is one of the top families and they have a huge amount of jade and it's about making sure that they keep that amount of jade and also like collecting more and that's kind of also how the war between the gangs work is it's this battle over jade and we are following three main siblings three siblings and one cousin actually i would say and it's how they run the family business basically i'm gonna leave it there because i don't want to share my opinions on that because it's gonna be coming up in the vlog although i feel like you might know i enjoyed it <laughs> so those are all the books I completed in June. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that you're enjoying whatever you're currently reading and I'll see you next time. Bye!